I'm at my best on the pitch when I'm feeling confrontational. Enjoying myself, enjoying the, the challenge and the physical aspect of the game. Well, it's Northampton are dominating possession. There's Tremendous from London. The competitiveness around the contact area, whether that's tackle, carry or, or breakdown, that's my bread and butter. And I think if I'm enjoying that side of it, enjoying the challenge, enjoying the, enjoying the fight, that's when I'm at my best. Japan defence when it looked as if Chesham had to score. Japan offside, England score. And a lad from Northamptonshire, Lewis Ludlam. So I was born in Ipswich, um, out in the east, and in all honesty, there's not a massive amount of, of rugby out that way. There's no big rugby clubs as such. The closest to me was Northampton Saints, and that's two and a half hours away. So I grew up playing football, going to the boxing gym with my dad, and rugby was not something I'd really heard of. So when the opportunity came around to get involved in rugby, I thought it was like American football. I remember my first rugby session, getting a ball and like, running off the end of the pitch and spiking <laughs> spiking the ball into the ground just because I'd seen like the NFL guys on TV. So I didn't know what rugby was. So yeah, rugby was was not something I ever expected to be doing. Knowing my family played played rugby really. So but as soon as I got involved in the rugby environment, it was fantastic and someone that welcomed me in fully as well. Quick handling, Dingwall, lovely from Furback. Here's the skipper. Lewis Ludlam has the Saints second. Yes, I've got quite a, a, a mixed background. My, my dad's side, my grandmother grew up in Palestine and as soon as things went bad there, they packed up their bags and left, went straight to Lebanon, which she spent um, a fair amount of her, her life. So growing up on a lot of Lebanese culture, Lebanese food, um, Lebanese cooking, which is delicious. And then after that, she moved to, to North London, to, to Tottenham, where she had my dad and my mum's side, a, a product of, of Windrush generation, so from Ghana, small, t small town um, in Ghana and when the opportunity came up for them to, to work somewhere where they could get more money, my grandmother came over as a, a nurse working for the NHS and um, my grandfather was, was building railway tracks and, and bridges, so and they built, came over here and, and built a life for themselves and had, had my parents as well, so I think something that we're very proud of as a family and we're very very grateful to have that, that opportunity and I think we owe a massive amount to, to this country as a family for opening its arms to us and, and, and I think even though they, weren't, they didn't grow up here they, they call themselves English men and English women so for them to be here now and for me to, to represent the country I think is a massive thing for the, for the family as well. Well, that's a good response from England, and Ludlam involved again. Like I said, I grew up playing football and, and, and was boxing, and my mum, with, with all due respect to my dad, sort of said, well, my dad was my football coach, and I was down at the boxing gym with my dad, so she said, you need to sort of find your own path and have your own independence, and um, when they won the World Cup in 2003, rugby seemed like, a, seemed like an obvious option for us, and from there, just absolutely loved it. It was something that, that took me in straight away, and started playing at Ipswich Rugby Club and then moved over to Colchester for a little bit and through there got picked up for playing for, for St. Joseph's College where I was lucky enough to get offered a scholarship by a guy called uh, Mark Patterson who was fantastic and, and, and sort of mentored me and, and, and guided me through, the, through that process and I went from a school playing, well we had rugby trials in year seven and seven people turned up over three year groups to a school where we did rugby three or four days a week, so I think that was a fantastic, fantastic boost for me and I'm very grateful for the, the opportunity I got given to go there as well. I'm just going to take you back to what you mentioned there about boxing. So if you can, tell me a little bit about that and also what that taught you. It was mainly my dad's thing, um, the boxing. I think he got to a stage for him, he's super, super competitive and he needed, a, needed another focus, so got back into, into boxing, going to white collar events. I used to go down to the boxing gym with him every night, training, trying to get him ready for, for fights at the time and, and using it as an excuse to whack the bumps out of him. It's weird going to events and watching your old man get him punched in the head, but for me to see him and how he came through those environments, I think was, was really beneficial for me. I remember going to like old nightclubs um, in Ipswich where They'd host like white collar boxing events nights, and you've got 
some guys doing drugs in the changing room before, like people missing weigh-ins, doctors not turning up, people um, running away with money at the end of the night. And for him to go into the situations and just be cool-headed, go in, get the job done and, and get out was something that I, I don't think I enjoyed necessarily at the time, but I think we learned a massive amount from. And then Furbank and now Loveland. It's back inside towards those softer shoulders. Loveland topping his legs. Oh, that is magnificent. Oh, power and determination after the same switch and biggest vision. And it's another one for the scrapbook. So for playing for school, got picked up playing for Northampton Saints in the academy. I was there for two or three years and from there they sort of said I, I didn't think I was going to be big enough to play professional rugby. It was probably at a point where I was putting a lot of pressure on myself. I wasn't enjoying my rugby a, a massive amount. It all got very serious very quick and I think leaving that environment was probably the, probably the best thing for me. I started enjoying my rugby again, started to understand the type of player I wanted to be and from there was, was, was lucky enough to be invited back at um, 17 years old and at 18 I was finished my exams, two weeks later I packed my bags and moved over to, to Northampton where I started full time with the team. Talk to me a little bit about when you were at the academy at age 14 and you were told that you weren't necessarily big enough. You said it was the best thing for you but at the time did you see it that way? And also, with that setback, what did it teach you about yourself? Immediately afterwards, my dad sat down with me and my school teachers as well. And they said, it's possible still for you to be a professional rugby player, even though you don't feel like it at the time. And they sort of said, if you're committed to, to wanting to be a professional rugby player, we'll do everything within our power to, to help you. And it was a guy called um, Graham Richards at the time who Immediately from that point, we were up at 6 a.m. doing an old workout called Insanity. I don't know if you remember the videos, but we were doing those every morning um, in the dance studio before school, trying to get us fit. He's taking me for one-on-ones, for -on coaching sessions. I think one thing that, that's stuck with me, it's a, it's a weird analogy, but he sort of said there's, there's two types of, of rugby players. You can either be the, the chicken or the, or the pig, and the, relates to the fry up. He says the, the chicken only gives its eggs to the fry up, but the pig gives its whole body, its bacon, its flesh, and you can either be the chicken or you can be the pig. And since then I've tried to, to live by that and try and be the pig in every time I've, I've stepped onto the pitch. Four for the step, it's wonderful stuff, and just reward. Lewis Ludlum gets over for try number six. And the Queen, she's sipping her tea and thoroughly enjoying this. I was very lucky to be able to, to, to captain my, my childhood club in, in Northampton and um, at first I was doing that with, with Alec Waller, who I learned a, a massive amount from. For me, I grew up watching him win the Premiership, club legend, so for him to, to pass on his knowledge to me there was invaluable. I learned a massive amount from them in the last three seasons. Of, I've sort of done it on my own. And when I say on my own, it's been with the massive help of, of a lot of people behind me. Um, I think we're very lucky in Northampton. We've got a, a great group of lads who are all willing to contribute and lead the team in the right direction. And I'm just lucky enough to be the one with the, the captain's armband. And I think that's brought the best out of me as well. I felt like there's been people depending on me. And that, I think, brings a little bit, little bit extra out of me as well. So it's something I've really enjoyed doing as well. Scoson is going to give it to Ludlam, his 100th game, the captain goes on his own, finishes the perfect afternoon perfectly for Northampton. The century man, this season's skipper, maybe the final scorer at the Gardens this season. My debut for England was against Wales in the pre-World Cup, quarter cup internationals and I wasn't expecting to be playing but on the Friday, I think, I think Sam got injured and Eddie pulled me aside and was like, how do you feel about playing this weekend? I was like, oh, it would be brilliant. He's like, well, you're in, mate. Um, you're starting at six tomorrow. So like I had basically 24 hours to sort of come to, come to terms with it, let my family know. And the whole day was a bit of a bit of a blur, really. But the only thing I really, really remember is singing the anthem 
and just by chance looked up and seen my whole family singing loud, loud and proud straight back to me, literally straight ahead from where we're singing. And I think once you've seen that, it all comes to come to realization that a lot of those people have put you in the position to, to be where you are. My mum was mum was working two jobs to be able to afford to send me to, to, to private school at one point and dad was driving me back and forth from Northampton every week, two hours uh, two hours each way. And you see them there and you go, oh, loads of these people have, have sacrificed a massive amount for me and now it's now I'm here, now it's about enjoying it and, and making them proud as well. So to see them at that point, I think that all came to all came to realisation. Adam Beard. And again, England Lewis Ludlam get over the ball at the crucial moment. And that is sensational stuff. What has rugby given you so far in your life? Oh, rugby has given me a... I think to pin it to one thing would be, be impossible. It's given me some, some friends, some, some brothers um, for life. It's sent me all around the world. It's given me the opportunity to, to make a lot of people, people proud. I think every time you put on the shirt, you're representing a lot of people. Yeah, it's got to put a roof over my head. I'm not sure what I'd be doing otherwise. So, And like I say, it's given me a, a massive amount of focus where as a kid, I was, was angry. Could have, could have gone off the rails. To help channel that energy, it's given given a massive amount to me, so I guess rugby's given me a massive amount.